Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is time to expose YouTube personal finance gurus, aka scammers, <laughs> hustlers. Uh, we're going to expose these guys, people like Jeremy from Financial Education, Graham Steven, uh, Andre Jick, Meet Kevin, Tom Nash, a minority mindset and others. There are a slew of these guys in these channels that pushed scams like FTX. And now that that whole Ponzi scheme has tumbled, they are trying to actually cover up what happened. Or when they put out a video addressing it, it is completely disingenuous. And they're not really taking responsibility for their audience losing some of them thousands of dollars, some of them their entire life savings because they listen to these guys. Now, uh, before we get into this, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet. And um, like the video if you don't mind and leave a comment. It does help boost the algorithm. So I have done videos talking about FTX before. You can find that on this channel and on my uh, second channel, The Radix Report, I talk about Tether as well. Um, and I wanted to do a video exposing these guys because I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, so the first thing you might be thinking, right, is who on earth would entrust their financial um, future to somebody who looks like this? Like that's Andre Gique. This is Andre Gique. Um, you know, do they really look like the kinds of people that are going to be responsible with your money? Here's Graham Stephen. He was promoted by CNBC and other mainstream outlets as being a, you know, young multimillionaire. And a lot of these guys kind of pretend or they make it appear that they got their money through investing or Graham uh, through real estate. And I would say Graham, out of everybody we're going to cover today, is probably the most who is actually knowledgeable when it comes to finances and the market, but he is not absolved from this. And I do not like how he put out this two minute video. He didn't even title it an apology video. And he was part of the channel called Millennial Money. That was Jeremy of Financial Education, Andre Jake, Graham Stephen, and Meet Kevin, the four of them. They created a channel called Millennial Money that has now been deleted. Uh, pretty much every single video on that channel had this FTX logo in the corner, in so the top corner So we're waiting to talk about it. this. So here is Graham Stephen addressing what happened. And if you are not familiar with what happened, please watch my other video on Sam Bakeman Freed and FTX exposing the entire Ponzi scheme, how it came crashing down, how it was used to um, basically launder money for political operatives, how it was used for Ukraine, who the background family is of Sam Bankman Freed. A really graceful has also done a very good video going into that. So I highly recommend that you guys go to her channel and watch the video she put out. It's only about seven minutes long. But here's Graham Stephen. Th this is a man, mind you, who has been shilling FTX for a very long time, not just as a sponsor on his channel, but also on the Millennial Money channel. So listen to this. It's the situation seems to be changing every few minutes, but as some of you may have seen, FTX US has been a sponsor here on the channel for the majority of the year. Their international counterpart, however, FTX.com, has recently faced liquidity issues, disabled withdrawals, and because of that, I'm worried about the potential impact to FTX US. So this is something that they all started doing immediately, which they tried to pretend that FTX US is different, is somehow protected from everything that was going on with the company being bankrupted and us learning about a backdoor that was built in so they could launder money and take money and transfer it from one company to another. And by the way, just look at the corporate structure of FTX, Sam Bankman Freed. It is so shadowy. There's so many different networks and companies. It's obvious something really bad was going on, and they have it based at, in the Caribbean, right? Offshore tax haven, loophole type things. Like, let's just be real, guys, okay? There wasn't a difference, but this was the first cope 
that these guys tried to do to minimize the responsibility they had to their audience. And let me also say, why do they all seem like they're not even real human beings? Look at how they look into the camera. They're all reading from a script. And by the way, I'm going to prove to you that they're all reading from a script. They're all basically represented by the same talent agency. Um, and just they all sound like professional salesmen, don't they? Doesn't this sound like a car dealer salesman to you? Listen to how he talks. I think it's pretty safe to say as a result of that, I'm no longer working with them. Fortunately, as of right now, FTX US maintains that they're a separate entity from FTX.com. They're fully backed one to one and they're operating normally. In fact, no, they're not. Actually, they suspended withdrawals and they're they have no assets. There is no money. So if you had money in there, you lost it. You're not getting it back. So the members of his audience, mind you, he has 4 million subscribers that listened to him and believed him. And here's what's so insidious about what they were doing. Um, FTX had people like Bill Clinton, Katy Perry, uh, Tom Brady, and others pushing FTX. They had an arena, a stadium named after them, right? They they had big name people pushing FTX, but they also started paying millions of dollars to YouTubers because the thing with YouTubers is the audience tends to believe that they are more trustworthy and authentic because they're YouTubers. They're not seen, they're not seen as corporate entities like perhaps a Hollywood celebrity. People tend to believe them more and put more stock into what they say. And I think everybody kind of has their favorite YouTuber that they almost develop like a parasocial relationship with. There are some people who don't like my content, for example, but maybe they really, really like um, legal mindset. OK, and that's their guy. So and Andrew, of course, would never do anything like this. But imagine that you kind of you become familiar with a content creator. You begin to trust them. And if they appear kind of the way that they do, where they kind of look into the camera, they act like they're being really candid. A lot of these guys talked about how transparent they were. You believe that they're telling the truth. So you're more likely to invest your money in a product that they're recommending because of that. So they took advantage of that uh, relationship and the power dynamic between a content creator and their audience. That you have a responsibility, I believe, as a content creator to your audience. You have an obligation to them to be as truthful as possible, to tell the truth. And if you're going to get sponsors for your channel to research them properly, anyone could have known that FTX was a scam. Hey guys, 8% um, return on investment. Does that sound too good to be true? Yeah, it does. That's because it is. And anytime there's a higher return on investment, it means that the investment is risky, that they're engaging in high higher risk, higher return, higher risk. So they they knew, unless they're incredibly dumb, they knew, but they did it anyways because they're that greedy. And I'll tell you, these guys are making millions of dollars. This man is a multimillionaire. Did he really need the extra money? How greedy can you be? But they, they could not help themselves. And does he really sound sorry for the people of his audience who maybe lost their entire life savings? you're still able to buy, sell, and withdraw as usual. Although with everything going on, I'm not sure how much longer that's going to last. No, it immediately uh, ended. And by the way, he has not provided an update on this situation because these people know that they are under the microscope right now. And in fact, they could face lawsuits for their involvement in pushing this stuff. I have been talking about these scams, these crypto scams for years. So I, for one, feel vindicated. So if you hold anything on FTX US, you could still take it out and transfer it to an external wallet or wherever else you please without any issue. Now, I really hope that I'm preemptively jumping the gun that FTX US is fully backed as they say that there's not gonna be any issue and everything will continue operating normally. I would love to be proven wrong, be overly cautious and say all of this for nothing, but I'd rather be overly cautious and remind people to move their money off of the exchange, especially during a time where everything is still functioning. Of course, this just comes as a huge shock because I've always been completely transparent about everything. 
I've always been completely transparent. No, you haven't. Let's be honest. Everything I do here on the channel and everything involving personal finance, so I feel like I owe it to you to explain the situation and what's going on. As much as I trusted the information that I was given, I was wrong and I'm sorry. I trusted them, but in the end, their parent company was not forthcoming with all of the risks, uh, this being one of them. This type of behavior is not something that I ever would have expected. But why didn't you expect it? It's called due diligence. You have a duty and an obligation and a responsibility when you have that big of a platform, sir. When you have 4 million subscribers, sir, you have a duty to do some due diligence, to do a little bit of investigating. And again, as I said, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. He's not a dumb man. He is a multimillionaire in his 20s. He didn't get that way by being dumb. He knows better. But if FTX US is at risk, I don't want anyone to get screwed. Like I said, thankfully, all funds at FTX US are not impacted. And That's I not pray true. That is an absolute lie. And where, sir, is your updated video talking about how that was not true and you apologize for putting out misinformation. It stays that way. I know just as much as you do at this point. So after watching everything transpire outside of the US with FTX.com, I wanted to give you my full thoughts so that you're up to date. And again, I do my best to research and vet everything that comes my way. And this one, I did not see coming. I've Oh, really? So personally use them as an exchange because of how trusted they were in the industry. I saw that they were backed by really big investors like BlackRock, Tiger Global, and Sequoia Capital. So I didn't think this was ever a possibility of ever happening, but here we are. Come on. Crypto is, uh, by its nature, not stable. <laughs> there is no real regulation, so it's obviously risky. You knew that. You're not dumb. Let's move uh, on. Crypto, proving one. Here we go to Andre Gique, another one of these guys who has made millions of, by the way, every single guy that we're showing you, these guys have made hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in FTX sponsorships. So you have to keep that in mind. And they, they blow money like you wouldn't believe. It is such an insult to their audience who have lost everything. Like this guy will blow $100,000 on Pokemon cards for a YouTube video. That's how much money he has. And he's not particularly smart. Once again, that we can make millionaires out of billionaires. So here's a recap of how we got here. Again, and I want you to pay attention to how these videos are slick, how they're totally scripted and crafted and edited, because all these guys are represented by the same agency. They might all be filming in the same location, the, the little fancy cars that they take pictures with, the Lamborghinis and stuff. That might be owned by the agency and they might all be using the same vehicle. I mean, really, we don't know. That's what's so creepy about this whole thing. When you think YouTube content creator, you think independent person like me sitting at home in their basement at a desk with their laptop and a camera and a Yeti microphone just talking into it. These guys are probably recording in a studio, okay, with people that edit their videos for them. They do these jump cuts, they do this slick editing, and they talk to you directly into the camera using a teleprompter and a pre-typed script. So when they look directly into the camera, you think that this person is more authentic and they all kind of pretend to be knowledgeable, that they have a clue what the hell they're talking about. Obviously, they didn't. But just p keep that in mind. Previously on Yu-Gi-Oh! So this week started off with CZ and Binance tweeting that they were going to sell their entire stake of FTX tokens because FTX was potentially insolvent. What's amazing to me about this is his, this is a man who was sponsored by FTX, not just on his personal channel, but on the Millennial Money channel, which has been completely wiped, okay? He is doing a video covering what happened from the position of like an outsider right he just goes into a video like oh let me explain what happened where's your addressing of what you did sir it to me the levels of disrespect for his audience here and the grifting is off the charts so we're gonna go to about the eight minute mark in here because this is where he finally uh addresses some of this let's see up to look into the mismanagement of FTX customer funds. But 
if FTX is allowed it'll create a better but the way data is stored now if you've never heard of this really nerdy term in crypto it's really yeah. easy merkle trees allow exchanges to see a customer's account hash number which shows them how much money we have that data is then stored on a leaf node where it will then be audited by a third part party he, company to make where he finally says oh gee guys i should have known better sure that an exchange has all the money it says it does and that it's not lending it out to someone else because the only way for crypto to succeed at this point is to provide full transparency and to be a full reserve system not a fractional reserve system like what's happened with the banks crypto companies should not be allowed to lend out customer deposits they should not be allowed to and you should have known you should have looked into him you should have known what was going on it's funny that he brings up michael burry too who said that uh you help know. me explain investing like i was fine okay here we go up i've always this is anything where, at all with that this is where he finally gets into his uh little explanation here. that said on a personal note i just want to tell you my personal involvement with ftx oh finally he gets to it finally at the end of this video instead of titling this video hey guys i'm sorry i fucked up i'm sorry i grifted and scammed and lied to you and i'm sorry if you lost everything he buries it at the last couple minutes of a video where he just goes <laughs> goes into like the FTX thing as if he had nothing to do with it. Unreal. Growing up, I've always felt a little dumb when it comes to investing. Because you are, because you don't actually know anything about investing. You are reading from a script someone else wrote for you, most likely, and using a teleprompter. You don't know what you're talking about. I still do sometimes, Holy but I used to hell. too. And I've always wanted someone to help me explain investing like I was five, he's... because I mentally am sometimes. Yeah, you think? And look at how he's doing the car salesman thing again. This is salesperson speak, okay? This is not a genuine person having a conversation with people he cares about. Oh, and it gets even worse at the end here. It is absolutely unreal. I'll let you see for yourself, though. And with each and every video that I make here on YouTube, I feel like I get smarter every week. And I try to make a very clear point that most of crypto is more so gambling than it is investing. That's not what you said last year, bud. That's not what you said five months ago. I love how they're doing this now, though. Oh, now it's gambling. You know, when they had their millennial money uh, to the stonks to the moon, you know, shit that they were promoting, like they did not say that, oh, gee, guys, this is an incredibly speculative because it produces nothing of actual value, which is what Michael Burry said. You'd be a lot better investing in farmland. Farmland can produce income year after year after year because it has utility especially NFTs. And I go out of my way to make a very clear distinction, the difference between grown up- I'm sorry, weren't you the one that was promoting the Spider-Man NFT? <laughs> Holy cow. Adult investing and building wealth and gambling, not investing, but gambling, less than 5% of my net worth into something trendy or topical perhaps that week to make my YouTube videos just a little bit more high stakes and a little bit more fun to watch. So he admits, oh yeah, I make so much money off of you dumb poor bastards that I can blow money for a YouTube video. I can blow $100,000 on Pokemon cards just to make the video fun. I can blow money on some stupid NFT just to make a YouTube video. Well, gee, guys, I wish I had that level of disposable income, okay? I'm sure a lot of his audience who lost tons of money wishes they had money they could just blow on pokemon cards and an nft for a video for one video holy hell the lack of self-awareness but he actually just lied because in another video or in another comment he actually said he lost 10 percent of his net worth much i tried not five percent they counterbalance those videos with the real way to build wealth that's provable which is the warren buffett approach and to focus on broad market index funds and to max out your employer contribution match inside of a 401k, the traditional one, then getting a Roth IRA, maxing it out, then going back to the 401k and maxing that out, getting an HSA, maxing it out if you can, having some real estate, having some bonds, having some dividends, 
and diversifying. Oh yeah, I remember his dividend phase. He goes through these different phases. Just go look at his channel where he pumps certain things, then he moves on, you know, it, options, dividend. It's unreal. So let's and, and this man, I'm convinced, has no soul. Okay, let's go to the end of the video because I shit you not, he's going to shill for BlockFi. I had to have taken on the sponsorship with FTX on the Millennial Money Podcast. I should have known better, and for that, I'm sorry. I owe you at least that disclosure and an apology. So going forward, I'm gonna remove all of my BlockFi links and I will not include them, and I strongly urge anyone that has their money either on BlockFi or FTX to please move it offline somewhere that's safe while you still can, because you never know with everything that's going on and it's better to be safe than sorry. So with that said, I will try to do better by you in the future. I'm gonna continue to be transparent. Thank you for giving me the benefit of the- <laughs> I'm gonna continue to be transparent. What? If it did, I would cancel myself off the internet oh, faster. Is... Closure, it'll never be enough. And I- This is amazing. Index funds and to max out your 401k and maxing that out, getting an HSA, maxing it out if you can, having some real estate, having some bonds, having some dividends, and diversifying. That is how I started my YouTube channel, and that has not changed. Ah. Even if the frequency of those videos has, my money is still true to those principles. Oh. But I realize now that no matter how many times I try to go out of my way to give that disclosure, It'll never be enough, and think? I have to live with that. Now, I'm very proud of the fact that I have never accepted money to promote a crypto coin or a token or an NFT <laughs> ever in my life. I know, sounds like it might be hard That's to believe considering how many I've covered throughout the last year, oh, but I was God. never paid to do it. Sure. And if anyone claims that I was, the burden of proving that would be impossible because it never happened. If it did, I would cancel myself off the internet faster than anyone else tried to because- Guys, do you hear the soft piano shit in the background? These people have no shame. I am convinced. Okay, so this is not- I am convinced that these people are just complete scum. Here's Tom Nash. It's not gonna be an easy video to make. It's not gonna make me feel good, but you deserve to hear this, which means we're doing the video. Now, a few months ago, I was sponsored by FTX. Oh, yeah, we all remember, okay? Now, which means I promoted FTX to everybody who watched my videos. I got paid to say how great they were. Now, when this whole crisis started, I tried to get off easy, basically saying, well, I only work with FTX US and FTX US is fine. There's no problem with FTX US. They, uh, you heard Graham Stephen do that. Oh, FTX US is fine. They were all reading from a script, guys, that they're continuously being given. We know now that this was a bunch of horse shit. Never mind factually incorrect because FTX US went bankrupt at the same time FTX.com. Yes, it had withdrawals open for another day. But that doesn't really matter. Beyond the factually incorrect statement, I was trying to get off easy here, basically copping out. Oh, yeah. So, hey, guys, you're going to continue to trust. It. it is amazing to me that people still are watching these guys, still tuning in, still listening to them when they flat out admit, oh, yeah, I lied to you because I just don't want to take responsibility. And the only reason he's doing it now is because he's getting so much shit from his audience. All right. I've read the comments, okay? I've seen people saying they lost their entire life savings because they believe these people. It's disgusting. Not taking responsibility, and I think it was wrong. I don't think you deserve that for me. My mistake was that I agreed to work with these guys because I absolutely was blinded or mesmerized or fanboyed by the fact that all of these insane investors are in it. Like the Black Rocks, the Sequoias. The Black Rocks, the Sequoias. He doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. All right, you were blinded by the millions of dollars you were getting paid. Let's be real. Because I was looking at this company and had no way for me to verify anything about it. It's a private company. 
So, so you decided to pitch it to your audience? You had no way to verify anything about it? That wasn't perhaps a red flag? Maybe the major return on investment didn't seem a little bit risky to you? That wasn't another red flag? No, you saw the barrels of money being dangled in front of your face like a carrot, and you decided to expose your audience to massive risk and lie to them for money, sir. But I was basically saying, well, look, all these great investors are in it, like billions of dollars. I mean, how bad can it be? <laughs> this was a huge mistake. I oh, should have done yeah, better. I should think? have done better due diligence. And if I couldn't do the diligence, I should have just walked away. That's the simple truth that I have to admit to myself and to you, which I haven't so far, but this has to happen. Now, I also want to come clean as far as how this whole process worked. These guys paid me $50,000. I got about 40 grand because I had to pay 10,000 to the agent or 42 grand per month. That's per the month. month we work. Some people in America are barely making 50 grand a year. He was making that per month. And these other ones, these bigger guys, his channel is relatively small compared to the others. I think he's around 300,000 subscribers. As someone like Graham Stephen that has 4 million subscribers, he was probably making $100,000 a month. Per month. How much money do you need, you sickos? For a month and a couple of weeks. Unbelievable levels of greed and arrogance. And the idea was that they pay me all this money and in my head, I'm saying, well, they pay me all this money to promote a company that's literally sponsored by BlackRock and Sequoia. Tom Brady's promoting them. They're on uh, NBA arena and stuff, right? I mean, that's the creator's dream. Like this massive brand comes to you and wants to give you $50,000 a month to promote them, do the same thing that Tom Brady does. Now, look, I'm not saying that this was right. I'm 100% telling you this was wrong and I should not have done that. But I'm just kind of trying to share with you my perspective of how I saw it back in the day, why I made this horrible mistake. Because for me, it's like, look, I got a family. I got kids. I'm trying to put my kids through college, make sure that my family is okay. And somebody comes up and they basically say, well, if you work with us for a whole year, we're going to put all of your kids through college. And we work with Tom Brady, with Steph Curry, and we have BlackRock and Sequoia. They bribed I mean, you. You were bribed. Put yourself in my shoes. Would you have considered this? Or no, you were bribed. It's called making a deal with the devil, sir. You do not need 50 grand per month to put your kids into college. Okay? It's not, what you, no, you, sir, made a deal with the devil. And yeah, there are some people that would say, hey, this sounds a little too good to be true. Um, I'm getting paid 50 grand a month to do a 30 to 30 second promotion for a company. You think that perhaps sounds a bit too good to be true? Don't try to justify it. Oh, poor me. Oh, I'm just a little poor person just like you that has children to feed. Oh, no, you are sick in the head, sir. Or would you have absolutely said no, 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 no way? I mean, obviously... I should have said no, but... And the only reason you guys are making these videos is because you are concerned that you are, number one, going to be investigated by the SEC, and number two, that you could face potential legal ramifications, lawsuits for your participation in a Ponzi scheme. I'm saying, see the temptation that they've created for me, and that's why I fucked up. That's what Satan does. Have some fucking dignity and fortitude, sir. Now, for about 10 years, I was an absolute corporate slave. I worked as a senior manager for Deloitte. I was absolutely miserable. I hated every minute of it. I felt like I was dying inside. I couldn't see my kids. I was never home. Oh, like regular people problems. Oh, you're so much better than everybody else. Dude, you had a cushy job at Deloitte a federal contractor, that you were probably making six figures already from that. Oh, I couldn't see my kids. Oh, please. How many people are working three jobs right now? And how often are they able to see their kids? And because they followed your channel, what little money they had, they invested in a fucking Ponzi scheme. I was depressed, tired, oh. just sad. 
And because I was in, always in this corporate environment, I couldn't be me. And you've seen me in my videos. Like the real me doesn't really blend well in corporate world. So I had to act more normal than I usually am. And That's what everybody has to do. Everybody has to, you know, try to fit in at the office. You think anybody that's ever worked an office job feels real great about being there? And when I was at my almost total breaking point. But he's a special boy. YouTube came in and it freaking saved me. Like I was out. I had no choice. I was unable to do this shit anymore, to do this fucking the office and YouTube came in into my life and basically said, hey, you get to do what you love, talk to an audience, be who you really are, and get paid a shit ton of money. And I was absolutely blown away how almost I felt like divine intervention, like YouTube saved me. Oh, it saved him. Yeah, how many people are, you know, spend years trying to develop a YouTube audience and they can't? How many people have a thousand subscribers and 35 views on a video and it doesn't matter how hard they work or how good their content is, they can never seem to beat the algorithm and YouTube promotes certain people with certain agendas. Isn't that nice? There's been a lot of craziness. Here we go. We've got another one. This one here is minority mindset. Now, again, it's like, oh, I'm making this video because I'm concerned that perhaps I'm being investigated around crypto and FTX particularly. So I wanted to make this quick video, it's completely raw, it's unscripted. So let me just talk about what's going on that we're both on the same page. First on the topic of- I love how he says it's completely raw, unscripted. So we're both on the same page. Like there's only two people here, you, the audience member and him, as if he's only talking to you. Like they do these manipulation tricks, guys. He has tons of subscribers, so we're both on the same page. Oh, it's just me and you one on one. You guys are so awful. FTX, I want to talk about what's important to you. There's two different companies. You have FTX.com, which is the scam. international division, and then you have FTX US. So I began working with FTX US earlier in 2022. And by the time I began working with FTX US, FTX.com, which is the international division, had already spun off, and you have these two companies, FTX.com and the FTX coat, US. Here's the spin. So I never worked with FTX.com. Well, FTX.com, the international division, is now facing a lot of liquidity issues. They're on the verge of bankruptcy. They're not funding crypto withdrawals. People can't get their money out. So they're right now facing a lot of issues. FTX US, which is the company that had sponsored me, I haven't worked with them in a little while now, but the company that has sponsored me in the past, they are currently okay. See, that was the script that they were all given. And you know it was a script because that was the cope that they all went with. Tom Nash just had to talk about how he said the same thing and, and lied the same way. This video is not brought to you by FTX, whose founder just lost 94% of his net worth. Oh, but how many of your videos were brought to you by FTX? Kevin, this is Meet Kevin, another scumbag in the crazy crypto wipeout happening today. It's maddening. Instead, this video is brought to you by the brand new course that- Oh, here's my brand new course. He's shilling a course after he is responsible for people losing tons of money. After he promoted a Ponzi scheme, we are not even 30 seconds into his video addressing said Ponzi scheme where he is shilling a course. Wow, guys. Wow. <laughs> I am releasing on Black Friday. That's on pre-sale. Linked down below. Use that coupon code. Used car salesman. It's unbelievable to me that people listen to these guys. Consider joining and the watch new program, them and give Elite them Hustlers money. University. Also Elite Hustlers University. They have no shame, okay? They're laughing at you. Check out the other programs on Building Your Wealth. The crypto market is in utter collapse mode with Bitcoin at the time of this recording down over 10%, revisiting briefly the lows we have not seen in Bitcoin since June 20th and 19th where Bitcoin traded around. You have no shame, sir. The gentleman you're looking at right there, his name is Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was the president of the United States of America. Here's another one. Jeremy from, um, 
financial education. This is a guy that pumped penny stocks, okay? If you know anything about the Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Balfour, that's how he made his money and how he got investigated. And by the way, this guy, I believe, if I understand correctly, is currently under investigation by the SEC and just filed for bankruptcy. This is the asshole who pushed the Spider-Man NFT, Voyager Di Digital, um, Tattooed Chef, uh, it just goes on and on. Palantir, they all pushed Palantir. Oh, this is going to be the next big stock. This is going to be the next Tesla. Palantir is going to make billions of dollars. No, Palantir has always been a CIA uh, company that has always operated at a loss. It has never made money. Peter Thiel is an intelligence operative. He is an intelligence contractor. His... Technology, Palantir, has always been used by the federal government. It has always been not, not profitable. So the idea that Palantir was going to be the next uh, huge stock, it, it just was like, have you done any due diligence at all whatsoever? And I don't believe that they have. But let me show you guys this creator's agency... Creators Agency is a talent management agency for digital creators. So look, you got Graham Stephen here, Erica Kohlberg. Yeah, the Kohlbergs, I believe, are behind this agency, making tons of money pretending to know about business and finance. This guy, Nate O'Brien, look at him. Look how young he is. What do you think that these people actually know about money? They don't. They read a script that is provided to them while looking very innocently into the camera and being attractive. And people are so dumb, they believe it. Spencer Cornelia, here's another one. Meet Kevin, Jake Tran, another sellout. Andre Gique, we just covered that guy. Brian Young and more. Um... 50 plus creators, 35 million subscribers, 3.24 billion YouTube views. It's just absolutely insane how much money these people were making. This 31 year old YouTube, uh, this 31 year old went all in on YouTube and now makes six million dollars a year. How much money a YouTuber with 1.7 million subscribers has made this year from crypto and personal finance videos selling Ponzi schemes and pumping and dumping stocks? It just, to me, is absolutely insane. It is stunning. Stunning. The sheer audacity of it all. I mean, wow, guys. Wow. Wow. Okay, so they have their About Us talent management. We help influencers scale their business and brand, business strategy, ventures. So the, this company basically um, takes, they'll, they'll find sponsors for people. Okay, so just look at everybody here. Real estate creator. Here's Minority Mindset, the guy that we just saw. All of these people... All right. They're all given scripts. Look look at this. And so that should be dinging alarm bells for you guys. That should be very disturbing. Meet the founders. Erica Kohlberg, an attorney in personal finance expert featured in cnbc u.s news and world report business insider the washington post a graduate of georgetown law look at this kid holy crap apple crider <laughs> he operates a network of personal finance blogs and affiliate sites i would i wouldn't even know what to do eric kohlberg has a background in traditional finance, helping in institutional clients source liquidity across Asia equity markets. Unreal. What a scam. What an absolute scam. CoffeeZilla says, Now that FTX US and BlockFi blew up, almost every major financial influencer is guilty and owes their audience an apology. Will never happen, but they should give back the money they made to on the sponsor 
the fa- to, uh, from the sponsors to the fans who are going to lose everything on these platforms. Finance YouTubers right now, as all the companies they promoted, are bankrupt. So sorry. Whoopsies. And just to show you guys, this is the Millennial Money Channel. This channel doesn't have any content, so they haven't deleted it. It's still there, but they've just wiped everything. Everything that was here is now gone because they're trying to hide it. Yeah, here we have CNBC taking an article that was literally written by that creator's agency and just publishing it as if it's an actual article instead of like a promotion for a company. It's just ridiculous. This part, this story is part of CNBC Make It's Millennial Money series, which details how people around the world earn, spend, and save their money. Oh, yeah, well, that channel called Millennial Money has been taken down. He spent $45,000 to build a freaking aquarium. That's how much money he has to blow. Lives in L.A. It's just, to me, unbelievable. He lives, uh... With Jack, his editor. Wow, guys. Wow. Stephen and his girlfriend split the monthly cost to have someone clean their home. Wow. Unfreaking believable. So here's Andre Jeek's Magic of Finance 2.18 million subscribers. Unreal, guys. Unreal. Probably earns $300,000 a year because I believe this is conservative and that probably is only from YouTube. It doesn't include his sponsorships. Okay, this is from Social Blade. Here's Meet Kevin, 1.8 million subscribers. Uh, probably earns, it says, around $500,000 a year from YouTube. He probably makes more than that because he shills his personal finance courses. Um, financial education, the guy who's under investigation, he's probably making um you know seven thousand dollars a month on youtube maybe even more and he also sells his own courses and has sponsors graham steven same thing makes six million a year on youtube so these are very conservative because they don't include their little courses their sponsors and whatnot and tom nash it's just unbelievable guys it's absolutely this guy was making 50k a month from ftx Daily personal finance videos helping you secure your financial future. And how how is that? By promoting scams that cause you to lose everything? Oh, great idea, guys. Okay, that's it. That's the end of this video. This went on a lot longer than I had anticipated. These people disgust me. This is what happens when you make a deal with the devil, okay? These people are incredibly greedy. It seems that nothing was ever enough for them. They always wanted more, more, more. Oh, I got to be able to spend $45,000 on an aquarium. This is where we are, okay, guys? Every single one of these people need to be called out and exposed. And if you ever subscribe to them, you need to unsubscribe and let them know that you do not support them anymore and the things that they are doing. So anyways, I'd like to hear your thoughts on these kinds of scammers, people that, that you know, were shilling penny stocks, pumping and dumping, uh, p- promoting things like Voyager Digital, which is another thing that totally flopped in addition to FTX. It's just one, it's one loss, one L after another, yet people continue to follow them. Why? It doesn't make sense to me. Ring! Re-